SAFE stands for Seniors Against Financial Exploitation. This was created to help seniors and their loved ones help protect themselves against scams, fraudulent people, con artists, TV series. Well, hopefully, you can all learn something on how to protect yourselves against this. Hi, I'm Peter Janowski from Ryan and Janowski Financial Strategies Group. This is another episode of Project SAFE, Seniors Against Financial Exploitation, where my object is to cover different aspects of financial exploitation of seniors, how it could be prevented. This show is really for seniors, their caregivers, their families, and we have different guests on to explain from their own industry and their own experiences how to look for warning signs and how to prevent this. My guest today is Adam Flatow from Senior Care Authority. Adam, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Peter. So um, I have a pretty good idea of what you and your company does, and I don't think we have had anyone on for Project Safe shows from your industry. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, you know, we've had people on different <coughs> various aspects of, of uh, senior care mm -hmm. uh, and that whole, you know, big, uh, what comes under that umbrella. But specifically, I haven't had anyone on that does what you do. So please introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about the company and how you got into it. Sure, I appreciate it. Uh, so Adam Flatow, Senior Care Authority. Um, we are a franchise nationally um, with a little over 60 different locations. I own and run the Long Island uh, specific franchise covering Nassau and Suffolk County. Uh, what we are, we're elder care consultants and full service senior living placement agencies. So. We help families find the best and most appropriate living and care accommodations for their senior loved ones. Um, that's the driving force of the business. Uh, what attracted me to Senior Care Authority specifically was kind of a, uh, a dual role of being an elder care consultant as well. And, and in that regard, that's where a lot of uh, some of my personal stories will come into play for our discussion because the consulting side of the business is really sitting down, getting to know all of the specifics of what's going on within a family dynamic and trying to solve uh, both micro and macro problems that they're uh, coming across on, a, on an everyday basis. So you, you look at the situation holistically like, like I would. If I'm going to sit down with someone for, uh, for a first initial visit, I, get, I need to know almost everything about them, I'm assuming. Fi finance is everything. Absolutely. Um, nothing we do is just over the phone or just over email. Everything that we do is, uh, you know, in the living room, you know, at a diner, having some rather in-depth conversations that from time to time can get very, very specific um, and to some extent very personal. Uh, we, we need to find what's appropriate and what's best for that specific situation. So you will consult on um, where, uh, let, let's just say, I mean, like, mm -hmm. actually, I think I should just say, what's your typical client? G give me, if, uh, for instance, we, we sat down with this family and we decided that, yeah, this facility was probably the best spot because of ABC and, you know, where we sat with this family and they don't need a facility, they can't use a facility, they sure. need home care or something. Yeah, no, absolutely, and there is no typical client. Uh, okay. Everybody is very unique and it, it, it is very specific to uh, what they need at that time and for planning for the future as well. So from a placement standpoint, um, we sit down and we talk with families and we figure out whether or not assisted living is the right type of environment for their senior loved ones. Um, there are over a hundred different communities on Long Island and each one of them is extremely different from the other from a, a cost standpoint, a care standpoint, from a, a, a licensure standpoint as to what their care capabilities are. Uh, obviously location, the personality of the community is very different from one community to another. And what we'll do is talk with the family and, and uh, hopefully with the senior themselves, the prospective resident, and figure out what the best situation is for them, um, taking all of those factors into consideration. Uh, that service, by the way, is a no-cost service to the families because we get compensated by the assisted living communities directly. Um, and we have relationships with all of them on Long Island, so there's no financial bias or anything associated with picking the right community. It's all premised on what's best in that specific situation. So I have a few questions, but my, my first yeah. one is um, to interject. Does the consultation services end when someone's placed? 
In other words, let's say some, Understood. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and the, I, I rem, after somebody is placed, I remain an advocate for that family for as long as they want. Um, and that's something that's unique to senior care authority and to my business. A, a lot of folks that are in this business as far as j placing people into the most appropriate assisted living community, whether it be independent living, memory care, or, or traditional assisted living, um, a, a lot of folks will stop at the placement. And some actually don't even meet with the families, they just have quick conversations to try and understand what the specific situation is. Uh, I and my company take it to that next level and we try and get very, very personal. And as a result of that, um, not every situation is gonna work out perfect, so there are some times when after a move in, there are some things that need to be tweaked a little bit. I remain as an advocate for that family and will continue to communicate with that, uh, let's say it's an assisted living community to, to remedy with that specific situation. Okay, you mentioned assisted living and um, I'm gonna be circling all over the place, which, sure. is, which is typical for these conversations. Circles are good. So, so first of all, um, I think most of the people who will be watching this we all know that the world's getting older. There's more, and every day there's more and more of a demand for senior care, whether it's at home or in a facility. I think the largest uh, age group that's uh, growing percentage-wise might be those over 100. So um, the, 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 it's supply and demand. The demand is, I believe, demand is going to constantly grow. Does your business cover every level of care? Because now, in the last several years, a lot of facilities have come up with that are the hybrids. They have like independent living, assisted living, uh, rehab, nursing facilities. Do you, do you cover every part of that? Absolutely. Um, the way that we would figure out what's most appropriate is that interview, that discovery process with the family. Um, and the part that is compensated by the communities themselves is relative to independent living, assisted living, or memory care, okay? Those are, for the most part, private pay communities. It would be a whole nother conversation if we talked about uh, uh, state-funded and federally funded Medicaid programs relative to those, but- Do you help that, with that as well? I, I can, absolutely. Right. Those, as well as rehab facilities and skilled nursing facilities, um, are prohibited from paying commissions for placement. So if during the discovery process, it becomes obvious that that's where the need is, for whatever reason it may be, then we have a conversation with the family and say, well, this would be fall under our elder care consulting side of the business, which would be a fee for service that the family would actually pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's very upfront, very, uh, uh, on, uh, v very defined as to what those fees would be. Right, that's transparent, mm -hmm. which most mm -hmm. industries are, are, are thankfully more transparent now than ever. Mm -hmm. um, again, circling back, you came into this business for a reason. I think you mentioned something to me once that prompted you to come into the business. Yeah, um, it was personal, quite frankly. I was dealing with taking care of my mom, uh, two uncles, and my father-in-law pretty much all at the same time over a multi-year period. Uh, and I was pulling my hair out of my head, uh, trying to figure out left from right and right from wrong, and it was very difficult, and I was doing it all on my own. Um, around that time is when I started looking into different businesses where I can take this knowledge and take this experience and help other people so they didn't have to go through what I went through on my own. Uh, it was extremely rewarding every time that I solved a problem for any of my loved ones to see their shoulders relax a little bit and have a little smile on their face. So I, I, I wanted to extend that into the world and make a business out of it. Um, very specifically, and I guess apropos to this conversation about uh, uh, fraud, scams, and, and theft, there was an incident uh, about eight years ago with my 90-year-old uncle. Um, he was, and this specific incident is, is what really prompted me to make the move and, and, and take on something with the consulting side of the business because I found this to be uh, such a glaring need to be addressed. So my uncle, long story short, was swindled out of $200,000. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit about yeah. what happened because sure. I think it's important yes. because there's signs that uh, you can look for when something like this is in the process of happening. So uh, my uncle was, is a 
or was, he passed away in 2017, very trusting individual. Um, lived in a home in Nassau County, and one day somebody knocked on his door, it was a contractor, uh, started, struck up a conversation, said, I, I noticed your steps are a little out of whack, I can fix them for you. Oh, okay, that would be great. So he started fixing uh, the steps, required some upfront money, my uncle paid him. Um, well, now it was, and he didn't quite fi finish the steps, and he said, maybe we can do some work on the driveway as well while we're waiting for some material to come in from the, for the steps. Now, my uncle was a very educated person, but just very trusting, mm -hmm. was not expecting anything to happen out of the ordinary. Um, started fixing the driveway, needed a little bit more money. Uh, said, uh, you know, the windows are broken, I'm gonna order some windows, think he can pay for some windows up front. Um, gave him some more money. This went on for about six to eight months, I'm not sure exactly how long, yeah. $200,000. Towards the end of it, my uncle caught on, this is, you know, not, uh, s this is not normal, this something, something is awry. He actually set up a sting operation. Um, he set up cameras all throughout his house. He videotaped the car, license plate, uh, the actual transaction of handing cash over to this convict, because uh, he has since been uh, prosecuted and incarcerated, uh, as a hate crime, I might add, because wow. he was doing it to other folks that were all uh, seniors. So hate, hate against seniors. Hate against, okay. exactly, wow. exactly. So the okay. Nassau County DA at that time uh, took this so very, he, very when seriously. He, when he did this sting operation, he did this on his own or, or the police were already involved? He, or? he did this on his own wow. and then yeah. the police were brought in. Okay. The One of the other things that's important as far as a sign to notice things um, is the bank also started realizing something and the bank reached out to the police. We're seeing some transactions that are happening that shouldn't be happening. Good for them. Um, fantastic yeah. for them, yeah. all right? And, and so I don't forget, if, if anybody's going, if anybody's w helping their seniors, their family members out, an important thing to do is to understand the relationship that the senior has with the bank um, and do whatever you can as a trusted contact of that, uh, of that person in your life yeah. to know those relationships and get to know the people at the bank also so they can contact you should something happen. We talk about trusted contacts a lot, which I'm probably gonna get back to. Yeah. But um, yeah, so, so these people were convicted, which is, fan which is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. You know, it kind of reminds me though, you, you know, kudos to your uncle because unfortunately, uh, through our experiences and doing Project Safe and, and just you know networking with other people in our industry, many times when a senior is scammed, uh, there's a sense of loss of dignity. Absolutely. And they don't want to share it, which is terrible. Uh, and that's why he circles back to that trusted contact thing. And most of the time when I'm talking about a trusted contact, it usually deals with someone in my industry, you know, a trusted contact to see what the financial advisor is doing, to see what the accountant is doing. But you don't stop to think, yeah, I need a friend to make sure the contract is not ripping me off. It, yeah. Hundred percent right. Yeah. 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 No, it, and you know, it, it, you're right. It was it was wonderful that he was able to put this sting operation together on his own. Um, but what also happened as a result of the bank involvement was the Nassau County detectives showed up as well. The last time that this <coughs> convict again uh, showed up to the house, the police detective answered the door. Uh, said, sure, come on in and introduce himself as uh, uh, John, um, uh, the nephew. Uh, why are you here? He said why he was there and said, oh, okay, great. Handcuffs right on him right then and there with the evidence of everything that my uncle right. had put together for the past few months. Um, so it was, I, I'm not going to say it was a slam dunk case because it right. did take some time, but yes. Uh, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And, and you see, that's why sometimes it's worth watching TV because he probably picked a lot of stuff up from watching Matlock and NCIS, right? Right, right. <laughs> MacGyver too. MacGyver, yes, all yeah. that stuff, yeah. good for him. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great story. Sure. Um, I'll tell you, you, you mentioned something how you were taking care of everybody at one yeah. point and I, I had a similar situation. I don't usually talk about this and, and uh, it's more, I think this is probably more appropriate for 
um, another show that we do, Financial Strategies for Seniors, but it, it all comes into play. And when I was a young guy, way, way back before I got into this business, it was about 30, 35 years ago, I was a caregiver for my father. My mother didn't drive, he was sick, and my grandmother lived in Brooklyn far away. And make a long story short, we had to put her into a facility. And um, this has to do with planning, which again, I'm gonna circle back to because I wanna talk to you about how people can plan to avoid certain exploitation mm -hmm. when it comes to your business. But um, you know, without the planning, unfortunately we lost everything because I didn't know anything, I wasn't in this business. But it came back to, to, for me to get more involved with seniors and my relationship with John and everything. And it just felt like, you know, you know what, there's so much of this going out, lack of planning and lack of care, for lack of a better expression, to avoid exploitation and protect seniors. It doesn't have to be criminal, like your uncle. Mm. But when, when my grandmother went to the home, you know, I was working and going to school. My mom had to work. My father was dead by then. And you know, we had to rely on the people at the facility to make sure she was being taken care of. And I'm not trying to bash any industry. We know that, like I, like I did a show recently, I don't, talking about my industry, I don't want to bash anyone. But there's unscrupulous people everywhere. And just making sure that they get received the proper care, um, you know, you're, if someone's paying for something, it, it, they have to receive those services back. And, Absolutely. And, um, and you know, so what, what would you recommend? I mean, is like, you know, you're, you're placing these people, they're putting a lot of trust in you, and you're putting a lot of trust in the facilities you recommend. So I'm sure you've seen some other issue, you know, you've seen issues in your career where people have been exploited, been taken advantage of. So what would some of the warning signs be, and uh, what could people do to plan to, to avoid it, if anything? Yeah, well, I, I think probably the most important thing is communication and education. Um, for the loved ones, the ones that, are, the family members that are not going into a community or a skilled nursing facility, don't just pick the first one that comes across your transom, okay? Right. Do some research, be educated, um, hire an advocate, hire somebody like myself um, that is independent uh, from the specific communities and can really give you the real deal as to what's going on. Um, so education is extremely important to that. Um, another big aspect of it, once somebody is in a community, is going to be communication. Make sure that you are talking with the specific community and understanding what that individual, individual service plan or care plan consists of and make sure that it's happening. Talk with your loved ones consistently. Uh, visit them. Don't just make the placement, have them go into the community and say goodbye. You know, one of the reasons why you're picking a community is so you feel comfortable, uh, not only that they're going to be properly cared for, but you feel comfortable going to visit and spend some quality time with them. It's so incredibly important to continue to do that uh, regardless of where the senior is living. Have you seen examples of fraud or abuse or any scams uh, with families and placing, uh, you know, directly? Have you seen like, you know, um, a caregiver, let's just say, or in a facility or outside taking advantage of of a family, yeah. Or a well, person. luckily, I have not seen anything specific inside of an, an assisted living community, and I use right. that term broadly, that covering independent, assisted, and memory care. Um, from a, from a fraud standpoint, mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything along those lines. Uh, from a from a caregiver standpoint, Peter, un unfortunately, all too often, yeah. Um, and it's almost exclusively is going to happen with private caregivers, meaning ones that are not employed by agencies. Um, just so you know and, and the listeners know or the viewers know, uh, it's illegal to hire somebody without properly going through the employer mechanics of, of hiring somebody through and, and uh, uh, paying social security, disability insurance, and all of those things. That's part of being an employer. Um, and maybe equally as important, maybe, but not on the legal side of things, is background checks, fingerprints, um, understanding who it is that you're hiring. Just because somebody was working for another family for a yeah. few years and that worked out well, doesn't mean that that's, that situation is going to continue when they're in your family. Right. Um, very specifically, 
Um, going back to my family, all right, uh, uh, there was a private caregiver hired um, based upon recommendation. This caregiver. When you say, when you say private, yeah. You, you, so, in other words, um, they're not through an agency. They're not licensed. They're not they're licensed. Not, and not they're, insured. Right. So they're, they're just moonlighting doing this, more or less. Or yeah. this is what they do, yeah. but. And someone just gives them a check weekly and just pays them for to yeah. help them whatever they would, you know, being a caregiver around the house, I suppose, or wherever it is. Yes, you, I mean you can hire uh, anyone in, independently. Somebody to, you know, the 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 16-year-old kid next door right. to mow your lawn. Okay. Right. Okay. The, Along those same right. lines, you're hiring now somebody who hopefully has some experience as being mm -hmm. a caregiver, but not part of an organization, and importantly, not background checked and not insured. Right. Okay. No, no vetting. To come in and now care for yeah. your loved one. Yeah. Um, and when they're doing that, they're one person. There's no fallback should somebody not show up, should somebody need a vacation. So one specific, specific instance, there was a caregiver uh, employed by my family. Um, the caregiver was 24-7, so right. always there. Um, the caregiver needed a vacation. Caregiver spoke with some family members and said, I'm going to be taking two weeks off in June. I have somebody that's going to come in. It's somebody who I know, gave the name, gave a license so we can look at them and say, this is the person that's coming in. Well, as it turned out, that caregiver who went on vacation gave information for somebody that was not the person that was showing up at the house. So I went to the house, started talking with and the this caregiver. Is a, fa a family member of yours. Yeah, yeah. So I went to check in during this right. vacation period, found out that because the person was going by a different name than what I was given, it was an illegal uh, alien, okay, not a U.S. citizen that was here working, caring for a family member, going by a different name, no background check, and supplied falsified documents to me showing that they were somebody else. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I had no recourse. There was nobody to go back to. Right. All right. Luckily, nothing happened here. Right. Um, but that very easily could have been a very, very uh, detrimental situation. Yeah, it, it happens way too often. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you a story. You know, part of my business is uh, sometimes we get involved in insurance, and long-term care insurance is is, you know, it's a big thing. You know, mm -hmm. it, it does help people. Um, again, I'm not trying. Said this on a different show. I would never try and sell anything here or recommend it. But there was a situation where uh, John and I had clients that both the, the husband and wife both had long-term care insurance. They've had it for years from someone else. And the, uh, the, the husband passed away. A year later, the wife passed away. And the daughter was trying to figure everything out. And she lived four hours away. And there were AIDS for a couple of years, 24-7 AIDS, for, for both of them and then just for the mom. And she was trying to do all the paperwork on her own. And it, it got cumbersome. It was actually it was more than cumbersome. It, it, was, it was a shame. How, how the insurance company had to put the client through hoops just to get compensated. And like you said, I believe the aides were private. So the um, uh, insurance company wanted these private aides to fill out time slips. Mm -hmm. and, and sure. in fact, So they never did this. So here we are 12, 13 months in, into, you know, st into paying these people just starting the claim. Because we, we, you know, we, we didn't know they had long-term insurance, and John and I came in late on this, so we had to go back and go and sit down and track these five or six different aides that were there, you know, around the clock, different shifts, and have them fill out timesheets. And most of them, thank God, were, were helpful with it. But to this day, she still hasn't collected, and one person. Uh, wanted more money than she was deserving to get to fill out the timesheet, and she was actually trying to extort us. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, and yeah. and you know me, I, I, you know I'm like I, you know I think oh I, where I grew up, where I come from, nothing's going to surprise me, and I felt so naive, and this probably happens more often than not, and and it's just a shame, and I have no idea how to. Um, you know, prevent something like this, except for the fact that, like you said, you, you got to be careful when you're going the private. And on my end, I would tell people that um, you know what kind of policy you're getting into, and you know, obviously, uh, you know the language involved, and um, you know, this, you know, this this policy is probably 30 years old, mm -hmm. and 
it's almost like no preventing this. And, and obviously when people age, and the, I want to tell you, you, most of the times these things are emergency. Oh yeah, guess what? When you need it, yesterday. Yeah. So. so uh, it, it, and it does happen yeah. very often, things yeah. similar to that. And one of the other things relative to the long-term care policy that your story just, you know, jogs something in my memory is there are many, many times that seniors have taken out long-term care policies 20 years ago, whatever it is, but the policy's in existence. They didn't tell anyone about it. Oh. So they're going through this and all of a sudden something emergency, some emergency happens. They need care, they go into a skilled nursing facility, they go into an assisted living community, whatever it may be, they're expending serious amounts of dollars and family members don't even know that there's a long-term care policy in existence. The individual passes, they go through all of their records, and then all of a sudden they find maybe yeah. maybe it's months, years later, oh my gosh, we had a long-term care policy this whole time. Yeah. Good luck. Well, all right. that goes back to what John and I have preached for years about planning yeah. and, and, and having that trusted contact and having your house in order, everything in, everything in order, and that's something you just can't prevent. And I know that, like I was saying with this other company, they making this, this poor woman jump through hoops to get compensated. Good luck after someone passes away to try and go track down aides to fill out time, time sheets. But this, this show's not about long-term care insurance. It's more about how you can tell us how caregivers, families can look for warning signs, uh, red flags, anything they can do to prevent financial exploitation. And again, it's exploitation. It doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be abuse, it doesn't have to be criminal, but just being exploited. Oh, uh, n neglect is a big part of it as well, okay? Um, but for, to, to get to your question, warning signs. Um, if seniors become withdrawn, um, it, something might be happening. I know that going back to my story with my uncle, uh, there was a time when during all of this, we had dinner every single Monday night. And then all of a sudden it stopped happening, okay? There was a, you know, a two or three uh, week period out of a couple of consecutive months where it just didn't happen. He was feeling embarrassed. He knew something was going on. He didn't want to be around us and he didn't want to tell us about it. Dignity. Uh, dignity, it's a exactly, big yeah. exactly. Um, other warning signs, is if all of a sudden you're seeing some new best friends or new relationships right. in somebody's life, Right. Um, very important to question that and have that communication because there's a could be a, a a high likelihood that that person is trying their best to instill their presence in that person's life for not the greatest of reasons. You know something we're, we're actually winding down the show right now and we're, we're cu coming out of time but that just jogged my memory. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do a second show someday since we I have so many stories. But that that new best friend thing is 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 uh, a viable warning sign because I do have stories where people have lost money, even a house being signed over to, to like that new best friend. But I've got to circle back to your business for a second yeah. because um, you're a franchise. Mm -hmm. Do you have a territory? So if anyone's watching the show, wherever you post it, are you limited to a territory? Specifically, I am Long Island, Nassau and Nassau Suffolk, Suffolk County. Okay. okay. I have wonderful colleagues that cover the boroughs, um, New Jersey, Westchester, Connecticut, and then there seems to be this nice little streamlined path down to Florida as well, from New York to Florida. So um, th those are some immediate ones that we can absolutely help with. And as I said earlier, 60 other locations right. throughout the and country. You're not covering where they live now, but where they want to go. Where so they want to go. Somebody's living in Brooklyn, but they want to come out to Nassau. Happens all the time. You're fine with that. Th that's what you would cover. Absolutely. Right. And if somebody wanted to reach you, what's the best phone number? Uh, my cell is the best. Which that's is? 516. 695-5159. Fantastic. I really want to thank you for being here. Uh, you were a tremendous guest. And I'm going to end the show with the usual ending that my late friend used to end it with. May the hand of a friend always be near with help and support whether you need it or not. Thanks again. That was absolutely tremendous.